Hey, so um, last week my bag got stolen. Um, I was going on a, a long distance bus and left it in the compartment under the bus and when I got to the destination it wasn't there. So that sucks. Um, luckily only one thing went that was like irreplaceable, which was um, uh, a cardigan that my mum had knitted for for my daughter um, and that like was really sad um, but yeah I mostly just lost a bunch of clothes so like could have been worse um, yeah trying to just like be chill about it. Um, yeah, what what like really annoys me about it is it's like there, there was nothing like valuable in there, and like probably the person who stole it is just gonna like rifle through it and then just like throw it away, like. Um, yeah, so it's not, it's not even like someone who is like obviously in a much worse situation than I am, like they're, they're resorting to theft, like I would at least feel like good that like that person had like some warm clothes and stuff, but like it's not it's not what's gonna have happened. They're just they're just gonna be looking for cash and electronics and I had um, a charger, like a, the, the cord that you plug in to, to charge this and ten euros. So like I'm down like some hundreds of euros for, for my clothes that I have to replace and they're up ten euros. It's not it's not an efficient transfer of wealth, you know? That's, that's just so dumb. That's just so, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, I've travelled a lot and, like, not... not been targeted... Um, been able to be fairly, fairly relaxed about it, but I think now having children like people look for someone with children because they know they're distracted like they know they are made like expect people with children to be more well off on average and i think also since since my hair's short like i look less like just like i look more respectable i look more like someone who i mean even though i still like scruffy like yeah i mean yes but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about how to be more, more security conscious without like stressing about it. Mm. But yeah, it's yeah. So that's annoying and like okay. Um, So I've been thinking about um, secrets, secrets, secrets and games, um, and in my little like tiny grid roguelike games it's quite hard to hide a secret because there's not a lot of space. So like the, kind of the, a, a canonical way to, to put a secret in a game is simply to um, have a big space, a big like connected levels or a big level, and somewhere in that space there's an area that's blocked off, and as you explore the game and go um, map out around the edges of the space, you f you'll, if you're, if you're paying attention, if you're mapping, you become aware of this area 
not being accessible and thus you if you're determined you, you go around the perimeter of it and try different things and reason out a way in uh, this is this is neat because it uses um, presumably the game already has um, spatial navigation and it's interesting to traverse these spaces it's getting you to re-traverse the spaces which are already interesting to go through um, with a different focus so it's like reusing what's already there um, to, to add a new layer which is nice um, so in, in Zaga 33 it's on a 9x9 grid and I actually managed to do this I put it like a a secret door and like the 9x9 nine nine turns out to be big enough that like you can easily walk past it miss it but if you're paying attention you can do this like re reusing the, the the spatial mechanics of the game to have it be interesting to find to find out how to get there and that's that's cool but so Imbroglio is 4x4, four four. it's just like there's nowhere, like, it's, it's really like pushing it down to the minimum. Um, so in 868 hack, I I put I put a secret level in that, it was really like just one one afternoon on a, on a whim. I was just like, oh, I'll just like you do this, and then, so this is maybe a spoilery episode, I guess. I'll try not to just like spell it out, but like... Um, yeah, so you enter a secret code using your spells, progs, progs, pro, pro, I'm sure for program, so it's, I guess it's progs, but like progs, I've been, I, I actually honestly never, never thought of that because I'm not often not talking about it out loud. Um, anyway, so you, you enter a secret code and that. Uh, it's up a secret level, and that's like so. You see what I'm trying to do there? Like the the designed space of the game isn't the levels; they're just small, randomly generated, not that interesting in themselves. The designed space, the, the part of it that's interesting, is the abilities. And so I'm trying to do like the the default secret kind of concept. Um, and recontextualize using prog abilities to which are like interesting in themselves to use to access a secret level rather than using movement and navigation which on such a small space isn't so interesting um, so it's like the same idea of take what's the take what's the part of the game that is um, has has the most design gone into it, it's the most um, deep and use that as the, the means to access more, more layers um, which is like, like sounds nice in theory but like in practice it's not great like yeah, like I said, I just like put it in on one one day. It wasn't something I put I put too deep thought into, and it wasn't a very good idea. Like, okay, I, 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 I'm being too hard on it. Like, it, it people had a lot of fun um, knowing that there was something hidden there because I I dropped hints on Twitter that that there was a secret. So people had a lot of fun like trying to dig out what it was and uh, eventually found out that I had eventually found it out and then after that found out that I'd already tweeted the solution like before the game was released because I'm a troll sometimes but um, mm, yeah so the, the, the process of discovery was maybe maybe good then like I hadn't I had not 
thought about the implications for the, the game as a scoring game. It was the first time I'd made a game that was a, a high score chase game and like I was just like, oh secrets are cool, I'll, I'll just like hide something in here and I, I just hadn't thought about the implications. Um, but yeah, when people discovered it, they quickly found out that it could be used to get an extremely high score. And that felt bad to players who didn't know about it because like they've worked hard trying to get the score and someone's like 10 times their score with like some secret thing and like I don't know about the secret thing I don't want to know about it or maybe I want to figure it out myself and just like yeah people who didn't want to engage with that layer of it felt bad because they felt like like they can't play the game competitively without it anymore and uh, even people who did know about it and then were trying to use it kind of felt bad because they felt kind of like required to use it because the top scores are using it and a lot of people who knew how to access it but weren't like experts at the game felt bad because they thought oh I should be able to get that high score because I know about the secret level but actually like because it's buried um, in actually playing the game you have to actually be good at the game to, to effectively exploit it um, so only a few people were able to get ridiculous scores with it um, but they were and yeah, because it because the because the prog abilities um, I hadn't really designed them with the secret in mind. They're just like thrown it in as an afterthought. Um, which set you get? Um, basically, there there were some that made it really easy to access and exploit the secret level, and some that were impossible. So it severely reduce the play space of the game if you're trying to do that because you would just discard half of, or more than half of the abilities is not not worth getting so that yeah I think that's the worst part of it like the scoring things some people felt bad um, I think a lot of the bad feeling was not justified because it's not simply a matter of you know the secret you have a high score it was really playing the game at a more complex level with with everything that was already in there plus which is good like that that's where i wanted to be and yeah it ended up working quite well because the the streak scoring um asks you to basically get a high average score to play a series of games and get a good score in each of them and it's not possible to get a good score using the secret level in every single game so then, then the challenge becomes each game identify quickly if it's possible to um, exploit the secret level in this game and maximize your score with that if so maximize your score otherwise if not um, if you're trying to exploit the secret level every game you'll have a lower average score because you're not exploiting it by other methods um, yeah so um but that's basically saying that like other parts of the game were strong enough that they were able to compensate for the secret level being not a great inclusion yeah so I'm not yeah I, I I've you know I've gone back and updated the game a few times and I've reduced the effectiveness of the secret level but I haven't I haven't fundamentally changed it I don't think I will but yeah I, it's, it's not 
I'm not completely satisfied with, with how it is. And yeah, I don't, like I say, I don't think I'll change it, but it's, I'd like to do better in future. Um, yeah, so, single pass. That's what I'm working on, a sequel or, or something of it at the moment. Um, has a secret level, and I'm pretty satisfied with how that went, went down, because it, Accessing it uses the wand ability, so it uses the interesting, deepest design part of the game, but it also uses spatial navigation and, like, yeah, yeah, the the spaces aren't human designed. They're not. They're not in that sense interesting, but there's still there's still a space to tra tra traverse, and. I like that trying to trying to get to the secret level requires you to move through them more thoroughly and just just in a, in a different way than, than what you're always doing. That's a strength. Mm. Yeah. So one of, one of the one of the ways I found that makes uh, makes these games on small grids actually work is asking you to cross the same space multiple times um, and Broglio doesn't and that's well it does it does with one character because you have to explore around to, to find where the exit is but mostly it's just a matter of getting to the exit which is like not that interesting but what, what I, 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 I stumbled across this idea with 86 State Hack. Um, like, you have an entrance and an exit, you go to the exit, it's not that interesting. But I put in the opposite corners of the map, so like maximally distant from the exit and the entrance, in a sense, um, essential power ups. So you have to go to this corner and this corner. Um, I think it's always diagonal, actually. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, you have to go to the four corners, and, like, depending on how the walls are laid out, you probably can't just do a circuit. You probably have to go back and forth a few times while the enemies are coming at you. And that's interesting enough. Um, yeah, so, so when I was... When I was following that up with trying to like, oh, how can I make a game on an even smaller grid? I was working on a, what eventually became Imbroglio. Um, it was originally on a 5x5. Five five, um, and I was thinking about how can I make you recross the same space? Because that's interesting. And I, one of the ideas I, I came up with in that exploration was what I eventually used in Single Pass. That you have a, you have the entry and an exit and a treasure you want to get to. Okay. But then that's that's a little bit of things, but probably you can just do it one path. Um, maybe it's the locked door to get to the treasure or to get to the exit, so you have to get to the key, get to the treasure, get to the exit, and that's four points, which is the same the same as I did with, with 868 hack. Four four points to well, three points plus where you started. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's kind of free as the minimum to get it to start to be interesting to re recross it. There's two, two. You just find a path that that goes through the, both of them, and let, like. Yeah, depending on, depending on the random generation of the level, but to, to allow myself to not have to do any anything smart with random generation is enough to just place three different points, and then you have to you have to engage with the level whatever's been generated. Mm. So that's nice, but the the secret door 
um, concept in in single pass then takes it even further you have, there's a there's well in the end there's lots of points you have to try and visit if you want to um, search completely and it's nice because you start making you're under some time pressure because frogs are coming and you have to evaluate based on that how much of the level you want to search um, and then search it by going there. That's cool. I hope this video like works because I'm like I'm, I'm in a like public park rather than my quiet forest and there's a bit more like background noise. But you know it's, it's, a, it's a really nice park. There's there's nettles. Um, so. Nettles. Um, if you they're, they're really, the top side of the leaf will like spike you, the bottom side of the leaf doesn't have spikes so you, you hold it from the bottom and if you just like squish it up then you break all the little needle, like they have some kind of acid in them and in a really small amount so the, the needle is like made to, to pierce your skin and really like direct the acid into it to a single point and that hurts but if it's not something that's dangerous in itself it just hurts and it's concentrated so if you squish it all up it's just like fine um, it's also not like it's not dangerous to get stung by it or anything, it just hurts. Like, um, some sources recommend like stinging yourself with nettles for like pain relief, for like arthritis pains and stuff, which like seems a bit... I mean sure, like it's gonna like increase blood flow to that area in response, but you can just like increase blood flow by like doing something that doesn't just doesn't hurt just just tap tap or like rub or just like move around that seems a bit odd to to hurt yourself to do that um but yeah like nettles are great and there's a bunch growing here and yeah that's underside of the leaf completely safe to touch. Top side of the leaf, also safe to touch but it hurts you. Um, very good to eat, very, very nutritious, very good greens. Mm. So the putting secrets into a competitive game which you know any any high school game is competitive, um, but it's different. Like, yeah. So I would say if you're making a directly competitive game, be very cautious about what secrets to put in. Like, it just it's going to feel bad if like you're fighting someone one on one and they pull out a secret move. But, yeah advantages them. So that in a directly competitive game the kind of secrets I would say are interesting to put in are basically any, anything that you have a lot of time to respond to but for example a, a secret arena um, in compendium I had a whole secret game which is like a nice yeah, because like one player might be advantaged by they they know the secret level or the secret game better than the other, but um, they're not directly advantaged by their their avatar is powered up by them knowing where to get the secret weapon or the, the secret hit point stat or something. You know, it's um, yeah something that that leaves the players kind of on even footing in the game. 
after the secret's been revealed. Mm. But yeah, then, um, an indirect competition like a, a high score chaser, then there's a lot more scope. But like I was saying with 868 it happened, it can it can feel really bad if the degree of difference in scores exploiting the secret is high. Um, so the first thing you could consider is secrets that have no impact on score, but that's hard. Games are games are tricky, um, and things that you don't expect to <coughs> impact the outcome, like sometimes. You know, people will find a way to, to exploit them. So, um, I think it's better to know, like, have it, have at least a rough idea of how you expect it to be exploited, rather than to try and pretend that it's not going to be, because people will find a way. Mm. So we can we can try and understand how it will be exploited and just try and have that be not worth doing. Which like uh, it's kind of the same as the first, like um, whether it's impossible or possible but not worth it. Like you're, you're trying to you're trying to make sure that in a competitive play of the game someone's not using it and again like you might fail and someone might find an exploit that uses it and get 10 times anyone else's score and that's annoying um also awesome but Also, there's, there's a way of thinking about games that um, in a sense at a competitive level the game doesn't contain anything that's not useful at that level. Like, it's, it's just going to be disregarded automatically so it, it's essentially blank. So, um, you know, a character who you can select but no one's going to select in a competition isn't part of the game. A, a secret level that you can visit but you're not going to visit in a competitive run isn't part of the game. Like, that is a reductive way of looking at it, obviously, and, like, obviously those things are there and you can play with them and for anyone who's not trying to get the top score, like, it can be part of the game, but that kind of reduction is a useful lens for looking at it through, just for, like, understanding how the game works, and, like, what what's, what's really happening versus what you fantasize what would happen. Mm. And it's also just nice if someone's wanting to play the game at a high level that they can have a bigger game. Like if you've designed something and put it in it and like, especially at, I make small games by myself, right? I, if I'm putting effort into putting something in the game, like it's preferable if everyone who's playing the game can have that be part of their experience of it rather than it just being logically eliminated for anyone who wants to take it seriously um, and it, like again it's reductive because um, there's the process of figuring out whether it's not part of a competitive play and Yeah, so, you, like, 
to determine that for certain people have to play with it. So it, it is part of their experience of the game. But yeah, it just it just feels bad. Like I, I say that a lot. It's just like what 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 it comes back to. Like if something just puts a feeling in it that's not right, then you try and try and avoid that. It, it feels bad if there's a part of the game that you play with that's interesting, has stuff to it, but you eventually determine you should never use if you want to win. Like that's it's more. It's more interesting to sometimes use it, even, even if the occasion is very rare. It's really nice to have... Dominion's really good for this, the, the card game Dominion. Um, it has a lot of cards that are kind of bad, that you would mostly never play, but there's like a one in a hundred set that includes them that you're like, there's a combo with something else that that if you just did the reduction and said, oh, this is a card they'll never play, then you'll lose to someone who is situationally selecting it when it's right. Um, yeah, so like that that's what I want to try to aim for, that like... Hmm. Secret parts of the game should not be a dominant strategy. It should not be something you always try to do. But it's cool if it's something that it's not something you never try to do. If it's something that uh, you situationally figure out what's the right occasions to do, if you know about it, um, in a way that I'm not going to try to put a number on it, but like in a way that can be relevant to the high score but not dominating. Um, so, like, if there's a summer score, and there's a summer score if they knew about the secrets, then this person probably doesn't feel too bad about comparing to this person. Like, um, it's okay if players feel bad sometimes as well, though, right? Like, um, yeah, I'm not trying to avoid that anyone. It's like, rah, but... Hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how the secret level and secret pass worked out. Not completely, but it's, it's a reasonable direction. And so... With a sequel, I'm like thinking about whether to do the same or um, yeah, it's like it's, it's tempting to just be like, oh, I'll go over one of this packet with secrets, and this that's um, probably not the right idea because like there's always the risk that one of those explodes, and mm. but I'm trying to be thoughtful about it. Um, and have it be a cons if if there are to be secrets in the game, which I'm not going to tell you, uh, but if there are, for it to be a considered from the start element of the design rather than something I threw in one afternoon when I had lowered inhibitions and for like. You know, I, I, I didn't didn't think too much about the impacts on the whole game. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's like way way easier if you make games of spatial navigation, and it's way easier if you make games that aren't like competitive scoring because you can just be like, here's a thing. But if if there's if there's a competition or comparison happening, then then it's going to affect that, and so you have to it has to really be a, a properly like balanced part of the game. And like and people like have different ideas what balance means, and when I say it balance, I just mean like basically not screwing up the rest of the game, or 
invalidating it. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks for listening. I hope I hope the the background sound was okay here. Um, bye.